Hi everyone. On the 14th of December 1853, the Italian anarchist Enrico Malatesta was born. I know this because Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica tell me this is when he was born. Wikipedia cites Paul Gibbard's entry on Malatesta in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. It has Oxford in the title, so I know it's a reliable source. Oxford University has famously never been wrong about anything. The same birthday is provided by Vernon Richards, who edited the first main anthologies of Malatesta's writings in English. Richards was the son of the Italian anarchist Emidio Reccioni, who knew Malatesta personally and collaborated with him on various papers. Malatesta's birthday is a fact I know, and I can provide page references to back it up. Or so I thought. I was certain I knew such a basic fact as the day the most correct Italian in history was born. I was a fool. One fateful night, my pretensions to knowledge were shattered by the hammer of doubt. I was reading David Toccato's Introduction to the Method of Freedom. It is my favourite book, and I have read the introduction several times. Yet until that night, I had not noticed one crucial detail. Toccato lists Malatesta's birthday as the 4th of December, 1853. I thought Toccato must have made an error. A typo, perhaps, in which he accidentally wrote 4th instead of 14th. I opened my copy of Toccato's book, Making Sense of Anarchism, Enrico Malatesta's Experiments with Revolution. He again lists Malatesta's birthday as the 4th of December, 1853. I've read Toccato's book three times, yet had never noticed this before. It could not be a typo. It had to be a choice. But why would Toccato write this? I know he's read Vernon Richard's biography of Malatesta. Why give a different date? I had to dig deeper. I opened Luigi Fabri's 1936 biography, Life of Malatesta. Fabri gives the date as the 14th of December, 1853. Toccato must have made a mistake. Fabri was friends with Malatesta. Surely he would be right about when his friend's birthday was. They must have celebrated it together at some point. But then I also know that I struggle to remember my friend's birthdays. If you're a friend watching this and I've forgotten your birthday, I'm sorry. I only know the birthdays of dead anarchists. In my desperation, I hypothesised that perhaps there was a typo in the English translation of Fabry's book. I immediately opened the original Spanish version with a preface by Diego Abad de Santalian. If you're watching this, Santalian, I'm still mad about what you did during the Spanish Civil War. Upon opening the original Spanish edition, I saw the words I most feared, 14th of December, 1853. I did what any person would do in this situation. I opened a copy of Max Netlau's 1922 biography of Malatesta in Italian. Nerds call Netlau the Herodotus of anarchism, or at least feel the need to claim that other nerds have previously called Netlau the Herodotus of anarchism. For some reason, people won't write anything about Netlau without at some point mentioning that he has been called the Herodotus of anarchism. I'm even doing it right now. In the Italian edition, Netlau writes that Malatesta was born in 1853, but provides no further information. I even word searched every single time Netlau uses the word December, but found nothing. I cannot read Italian, but no, I do not use Google Translate. Real nerds use DeepL. Toccato had to have a source. I kept digging. I opened the 1922 German edition of the book, and Max Herodotus of Anarchism Netlau finally provided Toccato's date, 4th of December, 1853. Yet, despite this evidence, I was still wrecked with doubt. Why would the Italian and German editions of the same book, published in the same year, provide different information? I once again had to go deeper. I opened the 1923 expanded Spanish edition of the biography, which was translated by 
Diago Abad de Santillan, and revised and augmented by Netlau himself. No, Santillan, I have still not forgiven you for what you did during the Spanish Civil War. Netlau again lists Malatesta's birthday as the 4th of December. I still was not satisfied. I opened my copy of Netlau's 1924, Enrico Malatesta, The Biography of an Anarchist. It is a condensed summary of Malatesta's life based on Netlau's full biography of Malatesta. English speakers only have access to the short summary published by the Jewish Anarchist Federation of New York because English language publishers at the time were cowards who thought the full book wouldn't sell. I'm still mad about this. In the condensed English summary of his book, Netlau again lists Malatesta's birthday as the 4th of December 1853. I had to check one last time. I opened the December 1932 special edition of the English anarchist communist paper Freedom. It was published to commemorate Malatesta's recent death on the 22nd of July. If BuzzFeed were to do a list of the top 10 special editions issued by an anarchist paper after a famous anarchist died, the December 1932 special edition of Freedom would be in the top five. It's just that good. Netlau again lists Malatesta's birthday as the 4th of December 1853. A regular viewer listening to this must be thinking, wow, why did you have to check so many sources? You must be an unhinged perfectionist who wasn't loved as a child and learned to base their entire self-worth on success and academic achievement in a desperate yet hopeless attempt to fill the void inside yourself. But no matter what you did, it was never enough, and only provided fleeting moments of joy which faded and decayed into a sea of nothingness. And you'd be right. Max, Herodotus of Anarchism Netlau, would not provide the same date for Malatesta's birthday four times unless he had a good reason to. Yet Fabry had himself read Netlau's biography, and despite this, deliberately chose to write 14th instead of 4th. He must have thought Netlau was wrong. But I can't ignore the fact that Malatesta and Netlau exchanged letters with one another, and Netlau's book was published before he died in 1932. Surely Malatesta would have corrected Netlau about the birthday if it was wrong. But maybe he was the kind of guy who could never bring himself to read a book that was about himself. Maybe he only read the Italian edition, but not the German or Spanish editions, which provided a specific date of birth, rather than only the year of birth. Maybe he saw the error, but didn't care enough to correct it. After all, how could Malatesta possibly know that a hundred years later this minor error would cause so much turmoil to a neurodivergent gamer? Had Malatesta not himself written in 1914 that we cannot know what may happen in the near future? I don't know who to trust. Both Fabry and Netlau are reliable sources, yet they contradict one another. One of them must have made a mistake. In my desperation, I start entertaining wild theories to explain the contradiction. Perhaps Malatesta consistently lied about his birthday and told friends different dates in order to maximise the amount of birthday cake he received. As I descend into my multiverse of madness, I begin to engage in archival research. I read 20 newspaper obituaries from when Malatesta died in 1932. They all contain wild errors about his life, because so many journalists are hacks and frauds who serve the interests of capital. None of them give his date of birth, and most of them incorrectly claim he died when he was 82. All Malatesta heads know he died age 78, on a Friday, at 12.20pm. I read through the British census for 1891, 1901, and 1911. Malatesta spent a lot of time living in exile in London in order to avoid being imprisoned in Italy and a lot of other countries. State's gonna state. The census reminds me that Malatesta was an unmarried mechanical engineer, but don't include his birthday. 
I find his address in the 1905 post directory. It doesn't help me find his date of birth. And since it is not 1905, I cannot even use it to find a mechanical engineer to hire. I spend far too much time reading through the birth records for the town he was born in, Santa Maria Capua Vetera. At the time, it was called Santa Maria Magoria. Apologies, Italians, I still cannot pronounce any of the words in your language, please forgive me. My dyslexic brain cannot read the handwriting of the birth records. The handwriting is not as bad as Karl Marx's, but let's be real, nobody's handwriting is that bad. I cannot find Malatesta's birth certificate for either the 4th or 14th of December, 1853. Sometimes in life we approach what we think is the end of our ordeal, only to discover that what we just experienced was merely the beginning. During my quest for truth, I stumble upon a photograph of Malatesta's gravestone. It says he was born on the 4th of December, 1853. In my excitement, I think I have finally discovered the answer to my question. But then I pause and realise that I don't know how old the gravestone is. If it was created by his close friends and family, then I finally know his birthday. But what if it was created later by people who decided to use the date given by Netlau rather than Fabry? Malatesta's original funeral did after all occur under a fascist dictatorship, and the account of the funeral in Fabry's Life of Malatesta makes no mention of a gravestone and what was inscribed on it. After several days of unhinged research, I was forced to confront my own ignorance. I don't know when Malatesta was born, and despite my best efforts, may never know. In moments like these, I'm reminded how hard it is to know anything about the past, and how uncertain and contradictory the sources upon which history is written are. When reading a history book, the words on the page can look like the absolute factual truth, yet the extent to which we can know anything about the past is extremely limited. Reality is overwhelmingly complex, and all history is a narrative constructed from a selection of the total sources which survived. It is easy for errors to become viewed as uncontroversial facts due to one historian repeating another historian repeating another historian, who made a mistake, such as misreading a dead person's awful handwriting whilst really tired and overworked. Even though sources which are available only offer so many perspectives on the past, for every one voice I can read, there are countless others whose thoughts and opinions are unknown to me, because they couldn't write, or what they did write has been lost and forgotten. As the historian of medicine, Roy Porter, wrote, the historical record is like the night sky, we see a few stars and group them together into mythic constellations. But what is chiefly visible is the darkness. I hope everyone listening enjoyed this video. It's an attempt to capture the amount of research that goes into making my videos and writing my book, and the way in which I approach it in a kind of slightly unhinged manner due to my perfectionism. If you like the video, please support me on Patreon and follow me on Twitter. Thanks so much to everyone who has and continues to support me on Patreon. You make all this possible. I'm currently working very hard on my book, which is a systematic overview of historical anarchist revolutionary strategy. Hope everyone has a nice day. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>